What's up guys, it's been Jamin Outdoors. Today I got a pretty sweet project today. This is a YFZ 450 quad. This is a VFR 800. So this is a V4 800cc fuel injected bike. It was wrecked, bought it for 150 bucks. This is a blown motor, I bought this for 500. And I sold parts off the motor, made my money back. I'm gonna sell this frame and the swing arm and make my money back. So it's gonna be a really cheap build. It's just gonna be my time invested, so it's gonna be really pretty, pretty sweet. So y'all stay tuned. We're gonna pick up a YFZ 450R, a quad. That's empty. So about to get in here, help this guy clean out enough space to get my new four-wheeler that's a yfz 450 r he stored it up there a long time ago it threw a rod so we got the motor all apart so we're gonna have to clean all this out move it over here and get the tractor so it's gonna be, uh, gonna be a lot of work all right come up keep on i'll stop back up a little bit that's good. at the bottom of the main frame on this so I can get a look at the shock because the shock is obviously completely depressed for some reason. There's the mono shock, the main shaft in the center, it broke right off. There's the bottom of the shaft. It's just, you know. That is the bottom of my shock. This is not good. That's rust. Yikes. Maybe nothing's in the cylinders. Maybe I can just clean out the valves. And... Really disgusting stuff. Whatever this stuff is. It's only in this one valve. I'm finally getting around to pulling the heads off so I can clean them out. Valve covers off. It's weird, there's no chain. So we got rust on the 
one of the cams. So there's rust inside of the valves and on the cams. So it's gonna be it's gonna be filthy. There's rust in there. Uh oh. The back right is the only one that had a bunch of water and nasty stuff. The same one that has this nasty stuff right here. So there's water in there, but the it was not frozen up. It actually shot a little water out when I spun it over the first time. So there's the 4T. There's a line there, line there. That one is top dead center. This one says R3 on it. There's the timing gear. Cylinder walls look pretty good. This head doesn't look bad at all. At all, really. I mean, this cylinder's gonna be the worst. So I got some vinegar and some mineral spirits. I'm just gonna clean out what I can. Everything looks pretty good. I mean, I, I, I think I should buff up these pistons a little bit, cycle a few times, make sure I get everything out of here. But these cylinder walls look good. Pistons don't look like they're damaged at all from the water sitting in there. I think it'll be good, to be honest. So that's probably the worst one for sure. I'm gonna take the Dremel to it, polish it up, and I'm actually gonna reseat each of these valves with a lapping tool. So I got this on the bottom of the valve, got the right size on top of the valve spring, and I'm just going to spin it. These are the valve spring wedges. Pull the whole valve out. I got this valve and valve springs taped up, so I'm doing the rear head, and it's exhaust, left, outer. So there's two valves in each cylinder, two intake and two exhaust. So this is the exhaust, left, outer. 
the outer one. So that's how I labeled that. There's a ton of gunk up in there. It's absolutely insane. So I got 220 grit on a really flat piece of metal. Just a bunch of crap on this valve. Try to sand it down and get her ready to go back in the VFR motor. So I got a valve lapping kit. And I pull one of the suction cups and put it on my drill. So I'm gonna use some valve grinding compound. I'm gonna put this on the valve and use the suction cup off the lapping tool to spin it. So I got some layout fluid. We test the seating of the valves. I'm gonna push it straight down. Nice seal. I'm gonna just do this the rest. So right there, it struggled to uh, make a seal, so I'm gonna relap that one. Gonna retest the seat. Perfect seal now. First perfect ring. Neat. Do a little more cleaning the exhaust valves. So I'm gonna resurface it again. It looked like I got a few scratches when it was upstairs. So I took the Dremel and cleaned up the head.
I know you'll take care of him. I know that. So I got the heads back together. Got all the bolts, the new head gaskets. I'm about to slap them on. So, put the head gasket on. And I got the centering dowels right there. Make sure it's centered on the cylinder, Joe. Now put all six cylinder head bolts in. I'm gonna hand tighten them first. Last cylinder on. Got the centering dowels on it. Put all six bolts in. Torque is thirty three foot pounds. Exhaust right outer, so still got the shim in it. Put that one in. Exhaust left middle valve shim. Put it in, please. Intake left middle. Intake left middle. So I got to clean up the cams. They got a little crap on them. Turn it to. I got it to the 3T. So I got R1 and R3. This is rear intake. This is rear exhaust. Now put the cam cap on. Four short ones on the outer. Or copper in the center. Gotta clean this off.
So there's two coolant pipes coming off the heads, one for the front, one for the rear, and then they come to the thermostat. I had to dremel it up, the other one was nasty. These O-rings are so hard to find, just everything for this motor is so hard to find. It took like three months for these head gaskets to come in from Honda. One was back ordered. So anyway, I'm just putting some RTV on there. Both the uh, exhausts are smaller than 0 0.011. Smaller than that. The right intake is 0.005. I'm gonna turn it over and do the right cylinder and then I'm gonna move to the back. All right, so I got the uh, measurements. I use the millimeters because these are in millimeters and I'm gonna start pulling them out. I'm gonna start measuring the shims. Uh, and I'm gonna look at the specs too, because I don't I don't know what the gaps are supposed to be. So so I got the manual up. The valve clearances are 0.16 and 0.30, uh, plus or minus a few. And that is for the intake. Is it 16? 0.16. These are 0.30. And so I changed all the shims out except this one, because it was pretty close to spec. If I would have increased it, it would have gone five. 0 0.05 uh, because I, these only go up increments of 0 0.05 so if I would have been 0 0.05 that would have been like closer to this number I both bumped these down to the lower I'm going to quickly put the cams back in to test the, uh, the valve clearances now so I got cylinder 2 and 4 which is in the front it's 2 and 4 and so I'm going to get I'm probably going to do number 4 which is both marks lined up on the opposite sides so the spec is 0.16 for the intake, and so we got 0.15 right here. It goes in with pretty minimal uh, resistance. You put 0.17 in, it kind of sticks. It's filthy. So this little diaphragm was clogged up in the hose, and so I'm assuming there's crap all in the fuel rails, so I'm going to pull these off. There we go. There we go. So that injector is absolutely nasty this injector is pretty bad uh, and so I'm gonna take these few rails off and then I'm just gonna probably soak them in diesel and try to get these injectors really cleaned so I'm gonna do some lacquer thinner So I'm going to put the injectors back in. I clean the canals in there. Clean the fuel injectors. So I just finished the motor. And now, in the next video, I'm going to try to put this thing inside of this quad. It's going to be a heck of a project, so y'all stay tuned.